Welcome to Voyager Elkar's menu system. Hello fellow gamers, I am your host Brent Justice and welcome to my gaming channel Justice Gaming Games as Intended. I've got something new to show you today, obviously playing a new game here, but a face cam. This is brand new for my gameplay videos, something new I'm trying out, and I will probably have to tweak this as we continue to play. I'm not quite sure on the uh, video size that I have showing the game. It's in the upper right corner right now, so hopefully that doesn't cover any important data, uh, but I may have to tweak like the, the uh, little window size that's in the game. I'm not sure if it's too big, gonna be too big or too small for the gameplay. Something new I've never done before in my gameplay videos. And so I thought I would try out this face cam and see if you guys like that or not for my uh, gameplay videos on my gaming channel. So if you do like this, if you like this, this face cam and you want me to have this in all games moving forward, uh, definitely subscribe to my channel, give the video a like and let me know in the comments what you think about that. And uh, I'll continue to do it if you guys want to see it. Uh, and as I said, I may be tweaking it more down the road uh, to get it fine-tuned just right because it's new for me. So I'm trying to figure it all out. Um, but as you can see, I'm starting a new game today. This is Star Trek Elite. Fo this is Star Trek Voyager, I should say. Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Uh, this is a classic Star Trek game. Came out in the year 2000. Why am I playing this game now in the year 2022? Well. I have a new goal for my channel, and this is something that I am interested in doing. I want to play and have shown on my channel as many Star Trek games as I can get my hands on. You all know that I do Star Trek Online on this channel quite prominently. That's been like the biggest game, uh, and I have now expanded to include other games on the channel. I have played many other games besides Star Trek games, and I'm going to continue to do that. There are going to be other games as well. But in addition, in addition to all of that, uh, I would like to have this ongoing series or ongo ongoing goalpost, I should say, of having played or to play every Star Trek game that I can. So I'm starting right here with a classic one, and I'm going to move forward from this with others as well. Star Trek Voyager Elite Force 2, for example, the sequel to this, and then other Star Trek games as we go forward. So if you want to subscribe to my channel to see all that, feel free. Um, but that is my goal, is that I will have, or try to have, every Star Trek game that I can play on the PC uh, on my channel. Do a gameplay, you know, a let's play of it. That's my goal. And so I'm starting right here with this one. So this is Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. It's based on, obviously, Star Trek Voyager, the TV series, which I have seen completely. If you are not for where, uh, aware of my Star Trek background, I have seen every Star Trek uh, TV show and a movie, uh, so I'm familiar with everything Star Trek. And I, of course, have played Star Trek Online, the MMORPG, since it came out. Actually, before it came out, because I was in beta. So uh, I am definitely an avid Star Trek fan, and I know my Star Trek. So uh, this game is right in my alley. This game came out in the year 2000. Uh, it is based on the id Tech 3 gaming engine from id Tech. Uh, it, it shares the same gaming engine that Quake 3 Arena runs on. So this game is actually going to feel very old school and nostalgic. It has that nostalgic Quake 3 Arena type of gameplay. It's very fast paced. It's get in and frag everybody and get it done. In fact, the tagline for this game is set phasers to frag. And that's the kind of gameplay you can expect, and I am very, very, very much looking forward to that. Uh, because it's a very similar game to Quake 3, because it's using the same engine, it's going to share a lot of the same weapon weapon types. For example, it literally has a rail gun in the game. Uh, it's just textured as a Star Trek weapon. And that is what you'll find in this game, is that a lot of the weapons will seem like Quake 3 weapons, because they are just textured over with Star Trek uh, graphics and art assets. So keep that in mind as you play it. It's going to feel like playing Quake 3 textured to look like Star Trek, which is fine. I like that gameplay style. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is purely for fun. Purely for fun. 
Now, because this game came out in 2000, it is obviously an older game. The graphics are not going to be, you know, comparable to today. It's 22 years old. However, I am trying to run it at the absolute highest graphics settings I can because that is the nature of my gaming channel. I play every game at the highest graphics settings possible and max them all out. I have a custom resolution set on this game right now. It uh, will not show up here, but I have it set at 2560 by 1440. So I am actually playing this game at 1440p in the year 2022, which is something you would not have done in 2000. So this game is being played at a much higher resolution than you would have if you were playing this in the year 2000. So it's going to look good just based on that. Uh, then I have all the other graphic settings in the game maxed out. 32-bit color, very high, everything, everything high, very high, whatever. But there's something else in addition I have turned on. Two other things in the driver control panel that I have turned on that you would not have had the graphics horsepower for back in 2000. I have enabled a 16x anisotropic filtering that is going to give me smooth uh, texture quality in the distance on all the textures in this game. So I am forcing 16x, 16x aniso on everything. So that'll make all the textures look as clean as they can for this game. Just means they won't be blurry in the distance. And another thing I've done, which you never could have done back in 2000, I have forced 8x MSAA, 8x anti-aliasing, that's right. From the driver control panel, I have turned on 8x, overridden and done the 8x AA. So this game is going to look gorgeous. Uh, in addition, I've got the multi-sampling on for alpha textures as well. So... This game is going to look incredible for the year 2022. It's going to, basically, it's a year 2000 game. It's going to look the best it ever could look uh, for 2022. So I'm, I'm interested in that. That's going to be interesting. Uh, now, I my history here, have I played this game before? Yes, I played it when it originally came out 22 years ago. I don't, however, remember what it's about. I don't remember what we have to do or what the storyline is or anything like that. So it's actually going to be kind of new for me because I just literally don't remember it. I do remember fighting some Borg. That's it. So, yeah, it'll be a like a new experience for me. So there's that. As you know, my gameplay style is uh, I like to play things on easy. I'm not in it to be, you know, tactically challenged. I like to play a nice, easy storyline because I'm in the game for the storyline. Let's begin. So set easy difficulty. And I guess we get to choose a character. I'll be a male. Easy engage. On Stardate 48315.6, the USS Voyager was transported beyond our control, 70,000 light years across the galaxy to the Delta Quadrant. There, without aid from Starfleet, we began our 70 year journey home. In our numerous encounters, we came into contact with many dangerous and violent species. Having a limited crew with no chance of reinforcements, we determined that we needed a specialized team to handle the more dangerous situations. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite okay. force of security personnel. So there's our elite the force. Team. Ensign Monroe hazard is team. second in command of this uniquely trained Monroe's team. second command. Equipped with Seven of Nine's experimental anti-Borg weapon, the Infinity Modulator, the Hazard team has beamed to a Borg cube on a dangerous mission. However, the team was quickly overwhelmed, and the I-Mod is now in the hands of the I Borg. Separated from the rest, Monroe is attempting to rescue the team. Very cool. So... Basically, an elite force created by um, Voyager's Tuvok. And we have to get this weapon back. Yeah, character detail is going to be pretty crazy. Mr. Monroe, we have isolated your team members' life signs. They appear to be trapped in the tertiary power modulation chamber. Rescue them at any cost. Acknowledged. Okay. Tertiary what? Tertiary adjunct of Unimatrix 01. Ensign, I've uploaded your mission objectives and tactical information. Review it now before proceeding. Uh, rescue your teammates. Reclaim the iMod from the Borg. Shooting and destroying Borg distribution nodes will deactivate green force fields. 
and enemy and also Borg enemies nearby. Borg enemies will adapt to your weapons and create full body shielding, making your weapons useless against them. Only engage in combat if necessary. The new iMod weapon was specifically designed to penetrate Borg's body shields. This is the best weapon to use against the Borg since they cannot adapt to it. It's pretty cool in a Borg cube. So I guess we need to destroy. There's probably no point in taking these Borg out. Well, yeah, it like disables them. Oh, cool. Okay. Trying to figure out the controls. I can crouch. I have to explore. It looks like I'm supposed to go down there, but I have to. I have to explore. It's what I do. I'm not going to attack them unless they attack me. Because that's the Borg MO, right? Don't attack them unless you're being attacked. So does this disable something? So what does that disable? That disables the force field up here, maybe? No. Ah. Is this where I started? I'm kind of turned around right now. A health energy terminal. I guess I'm full health. I can't jump. I'm used to jumping in games. Okay, that goes up. But let's go back and see what was through that, uh... That passageway that was back here. There was a passageway I missed. Somewhere. Here we go. Oh, that's a weapons energy terminal. Okie dokie. The crouch doesn't stick. I was hoping to hit C and it would stay. I gotta hold it down. I have to hold it down to work. I haven't quite decided how many minutes I'm going to play for each video. I'm thinking maybe just starting off with 30 minute videos. I don't know. I did a poll recently and it kind of indicated that everybody wanted like, this is blinking. What is that blinking? That everybody wanted like hour long videos, but uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure how long I'm going to do the videos for yet. Saving auto done, auto save. Ooh, okay. That's got to be where to go then. See, I cannot jump over this. Uh, why is there no? Is there literally no jump? I don't know where my controls are. I just want to look at my controls real quick. Movement: walk forward, back pedal, left, right, run, walk, step left, step right, side step, turn. There is a jump. Why is it not set on spacebar? That was weird. Elevator. Okay, what activates? <sighs> Let me look at my controls again. Something activates. Use. Yeah, some of it's weird that none of these like are automatically assigned. These key things here are not automatically assigned. That's weird. Okay. Oh, my savior. 
Get the eye mod. It's on the table. Uh, to, I'm not sure if it's if y'all can hear this or not, but the sound of voice volume. It almost doesn't seem loud enough to me. Oh, there's Monroe. I mean, that's that's a real gun. Okay, I have reclaimed the I mod. So I've got three weapons now. So I can charge up that way. So my health does not regenerate, I guess. Yeah, okay, health doesn't regenerate, so I, I've got to manually, manually do my health. Thanks, bro. I'll get Odell back to the ship. Yes, they do. Okay. Whoa, what are you shooting at? Okay, we have to get through here. So let's take that up, perhaps. Oh, this is back to where we were. Okay. Well, while I'm here. So let's go up the elevator. Uh, I'd come with you if I had an eye mod, but uh, what say I stay here and hold down the floor? Not that way. Hey Monroe, if you're not back in five minutes, I'm not going in after you. <laughs> it's like I'm in the Death Star here or something. I guess we have to go down there. There was a ladder and I just jumped right down. Didn't see the ladder. Um, that did something. Hey, the force field's down. What the? Some poor just beamed in and there. I don't think he survived. The Borger here guy.
this is where the blue force field was, I think. Or no, maybe it was here. Oh, entering a new area. <coughs> I like how the uh, game starts us off right on a Borg cube or whatever. I'm just going to blow up everything that looks like it needs to be blown up. I don't, don't know what it does, but I assume it does something that I need it to do. Like, I'm, I'm not really sure what that does, but I'm guessing that it helps me. Probably disables something that I need disabled. I guess the game doesn't recognize headshots, like separate body parts and shots. For shots. Just as long as I hit them is really all that matters. get across I guess I need to get up there or over there like little elevators There's a little room up there. Oh, hello. Well, they came out of nowhere. These are like little alcove rooms. That's neat. I want to see what's in this room up here. I assuming I don't want to fall. Just help. Huh. Okay, I need to get to that platform down there. But that's only going to raise me up. That raises me down to there. That would raise, or maybe I can get on this and go down. Yes, I can.
Okay, they really uh, g get up on you. Get behind you. Might need to get on that, I think. Wait for it to come back down. I guess I should be destroying these along the way. We're on the other side, entering a new area. Okay, loading, mission information updated. the hazard team. They're trapped behind some sort of force field. Acknowledged, Ensign. See if you can locate the control console for the force field. Rescue your teammates. Gonna be men. I don't have time for this. No way, uh, the dog. Well, that's one way to do it. A little destructive. Oh, it was a holodeck simulation. Well, what was I supposed to do? Oh, I thought we actually were really in a more cube. There's Tuvok, looking as polygonal as ever. Mr. Monroe, your tactical approach was, shall we say? Hazard team, report to debriefing. Nice going, Monroe. Hmm. So I guess shooting the console, not the thing to do, huh? I can't even tell if my face is in the, in the face cam. Hopefully it is. Was he supposed to know the panel would explode? That point is not relevant, Mr. Monroe. A given situation is not as predictable as you might desire. Your reckless decision has caused the death of you and your teammates. Mm. You have failed. So it actually caused our death. Had you followed standard hazard team procedures, you may have survived the simulation and achieved your mission objectives. Yes, sir. Procedure. Speak freely, Hanson. Deck four. With all due respect, sir, I don't think procedure would have mattered. There wasn't any way I could have possibly rescued them. Someday, Mr. Monroe, you may be called upon to do the impossible. Consider this to be your personal Kobayashi Maru. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Computer, reroute turbo lift to the bridge. I'm gonna turn down the music again. I think it's still too loud. Ooh, we got like uh, cutscenes. Status. Janeway? Engine Kim. Warp drive is offline. What happened? We responded to a distress signal from a derelict vessel and it opened fire. Tuvok, they don't respond to hails. Maybe we need to send a clearer message. Target their weapon systems and disable them. Direct hit. Phasers had no discernible effect. Half shields are down, Captain. 
Rerouting auxiliary power to the shields. Captain, I'm getting reports of extensive damage on decks 9 and 10. We're not going to survive another hit. Photon torpedoes, full spread. Torpedoes away. Torpedoes away! Oh, we vanished. Interesting plot. So we've got transported somewhere else. I am undamaged. What just happened? Captain, we seem to have been torn from normal space. I think we've been pulled through some sort of isodimensional rift. Where are we? Apparently, here, Captain. Sensors and most of Voyager's primary systems are offline. Until repairs are made, it may be difficult to ascertain exactly where here is. It feels just like watching an episode like this would be a commercial break. That was a good introduction. I have to say, it feels like you're watching Star Trek Voyager. And look, we even get an intro. Just like the TV show. I mean, that's really, really cool. You have to imagine when this came out in 2000, you know, Voyager was the thing and it was, that was really cool. So being able to play a game based on the TV show that we had just seen, it's a pretty big deal. And I guess it's voiced by everybody. That's the other important thing. It's voiced by the original actors. So it's, you know, like just like the TV show. You can't beat that. It's not the music, the original music. It's kind of close. They couldn't use the music, I guess. I love this. I mean, it's like I'm playing the TV show. And it's a good storyline setup. Stardate 53854.7. It's like you've got a title by an hazard unknown team. force and transported to some kind of starship graveyard, whereabouts unknown. The ship is heavily damaged. Communications, propulsion, and other systems are offline. Until repairs are done, we're utterly helpless, stranded. I'm Let's liking this. this. Look at this. I'm on the bridge. Get damage control online. Harry, find out what you can about those other ships and exactly where we are. Hi, Captain. Uh. Captain, there's a containment leak in engineering. If we can't get it sealed, we're going to have a warp core breach. Ensign Monroe, you're wearing a hazard suit. Get down to engineering. Oh, and help apparently I'm seal that wearing a hazard suit. So I've got a new mission now. I think I'm actually going to stop my video today. This was a good intro. Captain, I want to make sure my recording is working. <laughs> I want to make sure my my wet, my uh, face cam is working and everything. So I'm, I'm actually going to stop here. But I'm going to also turn down the... I think I still need to... Like, tweak stuff. Yeah, the music volume was like glaringly loud. That was weird. So that should help. Trying, Enten, and see if communications are back online. It's even still a little. There. Now that's not so glaringly loud and we can actually hear them talking. That would be nice. So I am gonna stop here. I believe the captain ordered you to go to engineering. I don't know if there's any consequences if you don't do anything, so let me save my game. There we go, new save made. And I'm going to stop the video here for today and uh, check out, make sure everything's working good. This will be my part one. 
and uh, I will continue in the next video with part two, but I'm really, really looking forward to uh, playing this game, and uh, I think it's started off on a really, really cool storyline. Uh, we've been thrown into somewhere, and it's just like a Voyager episode would go in Star Trek Voyager. Something crazy happens, and you got to figure out what's going on. And uh, that's what it feels like here. So I like this setup. This is this is really neat. This is fun, even though the graphics and game are so old. The storyline is what I'm in it for. And um, the combat was not that difficult, but again, I'm in it for the storyline. So looking forward to that as this continues. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this first part introduction to Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. I hope you will uh, stick with it and watch the entire playthrough. If you want to see this playthrough, then uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and uh, enjoy it. I hope you do. Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot. So thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.